Okay, today we're going to continue with part two of the 100 kilogram heavy lift drone. Yeah, you heard that right. It can lift 100 kilograms. If you haven't seen part one, make sure you go and watch it because otherwise this video won't make any sense. It's been plagued with problems, this drone. I, I couldn't even begin to tell you all the problems I've had. The final thing that broke was the plywood motor mount. So I asked PCBWay to make aluminum motor mounts. We're going to swap them out. I also have a new flight controller. We're actually going to ditch the Pixhawk. I spoke with some people. They say it's not the best for these type of heavy lift uh, drones. So I got in contact with another guy that had a flight controller. He said it would work perfectly right out of the box. So we're going to test that out. Now, maybe the sickest upgrade of them all. New batteries. Now, one of the issues that we had was that the drone was too light, which meant that the RPMs of the motors was too low to begin to stabilize the drone, which is why it started to oscillate like that. It was simply because the drone was too light. And so uh, heavier battery is gonna result in longer flight time, but also make the drone heavier. So that's why I did that. Now, let me tell you, it's not a lightweight. It's still 15 kilograms without the batteries, but the motors are incredibly powerful. Possibly it could lift me. That's really the end goal. So let's start building. So I started to take apart the drone, basically putting me back to square one. I don't mind it though. You have to just run through loads of crap components before you can hit gold. You get some gray hairs along the way, but you know, that's nice. I was able to cut 20 centimeters of each arm, way more manageable, and hopefully contributes to stiffness of the frame. Straight up drenched, every bolt, every screw, anything that could vibrate has Loctite on it. The aluminum motor mounts work great, flawless. Now the only thing that I did a little mess up was this is now facing forward. So we have a black and a red arm. I'm gonna have to repaint it so we know what's facing forward. Now you see the gap on the propellers. I think that looks great. Now the only thing left is to add the fourth motor and uh, we get going with the flight controller, the battery setup and uh, well, just routing all the cables through all the arms. Did we get it? I used the X11 motors for the uh, hovercraft, for the Mars gravity apparatus, and they still work. They've been through hell and back, but they still work, so thumbs up. Oh yeah, landing gear. Turns out it's a little trickier than people think, at least a little trickier than I think it is, because I have done several iterations at this point. As of right now, they look like this. It consists of a 3D printed solid part that fits right underneath the motor, and that's really the key. The previous iterations, you can see I moved around all over the drone and that kind of turned out to be a mistake because when you crash, the propeller is the first thing to hit the ground if the landing gear isn't right beneath the motor or further out, that would be even better. But I'm also a little concerned about the prop wash it hitting the landing gear, so I don't want anything sticking out. Now the idea for this part is to make kind of a sandwich. You take the plastic, aluminum and the motor and you screw them all together. Now, I couldn't do that on some of the screws because I stripped them, so... Yeah, that's uh, my girlfriend. Uh, in a crash, of course, this part wouldn't be able to withstand the entire weight of the drone, so what do you do? Well, you reinforce the heck out of it. So here's a pretty sleek trick to reinforce your 3D prints and hopefully it works or I will look like a dumbass pretty quick. You take a small piece of a two mil piano wire and you hammer it into the part, the entire depth of the component. And that really works. Check this out. There we go. And now we do the same thing on the other three pre-drilled holes. We have fixed the landing gear and I've 3D printed the battery holders on the bottom side of the drone. Now it's time for the GPS, the flight controller, the electronics, all the good of good stuff. Let's get it. At this point I had no idea what I was up against. To mount it on the drone, easy peasy, no more than 10 minutes, but right about everything else did not work. USB, radio control, even the motor check feature didn't work, so it cost me another 3 days and 25 grey hairs. Here we are doing the very final GPS calibration, and now I could for the first time test the drone with our new fancy upgrades. Very exciting.
Okay, it's tethered. <sighs> Look on the bright side, at least it works as a lawnmower. Not bad, you know. In case it doesn't work out as a drone, we might be able to re-register it as a lawnmower. Huh. Probably a feature. Straight up, this sucks. I don't have any more propellers. They're expensive as shit. I asked the company that makes the flight controller if the fact that I have to go 50% throttle for the motors to ramp up, if that was a problem. They clearly said it's not a problem to worry about. Turns out it was a bit of a problem. Turns out it was not a problem at all and it was all my fault. The motor layout from the Pixhawk we used before is not the same as on the new controller. I knew that though, but at some point I managed to simply put the wrong signal wire into motor two and three. If you think I'm gonna try to repair this using super glue, you're wrong. It, no. <laughs> Not my finest work, actually, not bad. Uh, it looks like crap, but hopefully it will work. The odds of catastrophic failure increased rapidly. We'll try to balance it using this 3D printed balancer that I made, I'll see if it works. Okay, definitely this side is heavier. Okay, so we'll put a piece of tape on this side. Okay, this side without the tape is still heavier, so we'll add even more tape to the other side. Okay, I don't think we're gonna see a better result than that. Let's do it on the other four propellers and pray to God it works. I made sure this time that all motors were correctly connected by doing this. Would have saved me a lot of headache had I just done this before the first flight. Imagine trusting your drone so little that you have to tether it every flight. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the tether actually kicked in in the crash clip. I'm pretty sure it did. Oh, nice. New flight controller, new batteries, repaired propeller of all things. Here we go, take off number two. Wow, look how stable it is. I'm, I'm not even touching the controller. I'm not even touching the controller. Okay, landing. <laughs> I can't. Holy shit, I can't believe that worked so well. The GPS was locked in. Phase two for this video, check this out. We're building this drop mechanism with this big ass servo so we can drop really heavy payload and we'll see how much weight we can carry with that drone. Let's go. I got started by cutting aluminium feet for a much taller landing gear, giving us better clearance for the drop <sighs> mechanism. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that works better than expected, I gotta say. Lovely. Först och främst, ju längre bort du står, desto bättre. Så jag tänker att du kan stå. Vi testar först bara, ser om den fungerar. Ett kilo. Vi testar. Vi behöver en utmaning. Nu tar vi den här. Fyra kilo. Okej, 
Okej. Okay. Jag släpper på 3, 3, 2, 1. Vi, vi måste ju testa något tyngre nu. <laughs> vi har inget annat val. The adapter and motor mount are precisely the type of parts that PCBWay can make. All you have to do is upload your file and it will provide you with materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing, it's in their name. And with their instant quote feature, you will get their pricing up front, which is really appreciated. For the past years, I've mainly used their 3D printing and CNC service, but check out their website in the description below to find out what parts they can make you. Nej. Vilket misstag. Den drog hela skiten alltså. Jag såg inte det. Jag tänkte vad 17 händer, vad 17 händer. Oh. Vet du vad som är otroligt? Det är att propellern fortfarande är hel. <laughs> Okej, okay, jag släpper. Ett, två, tre. Oh nej, den släpper inte. That's because the servo can't pull the pin out, so I 3D printed this dual servo mechanism and moved the connection point on the servo arm further down, so now it should be about four times as strong. Hell yes. I also gave it a new paint job. We're back at it again. Let's see if the new upgraded dual servo drop mechanism can uh, manage the wheelbarrow. Okay, we're dropping it in one, two. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right, next up, a bucket of water. Yes. Oh yes, destruction. What's next? I, I want to show you my perspective. I'm seeing this massive drone just above me and it's just a ridiculous view. So let me put on the GoPro actually and see if I can show you guys. It's just an insane sight, really. Oh, 35. In part one of this drone build, this was 22 kilograms, mainly because we used lithium polymer batteries. Now we've added 10 more kilograms of extra battery. So no wonder it's much heavier. We've also added a drop mechanism, another battery, the GoPro. So what it did in this clip is actually quite insane. Not only does it lift itself at 35, a wheelbarrow at 12, but it ragdolls at tetherweight at 60 kilograms. So that's more than 100 kilograms. And that's where I think we are at this drone, about 25 kilograms per motor. So about 100 kilograms of thrust. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, doing 20 kilograms. <laughs> Whoa! I, I really didn't think I would manage to drop it, but the dual servo worked really well. Okay, we're doing 40 kilograms. This is probably where something goes wrong. If the propeller doesn't blow, Something else will. Wow! Whoa! 40 kilograms! Holy shit! Okay, drop it! Drop it! Whoa! Whoa! 65, 100, all up weight. Let's go.
Whoa! Oh no way! It ripped the 3D printed part right out. Oh no way! Can I'm I'm counting it. It was off the ground for a brief moment there. Holy! It ripped it right out. No way. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. The only thing I ask in return is the thumbs up for the algorithm. And a special thank you to Timmy in China, who sent the batteries. They are gonna change the game. I'm gonna use them in a lot more projects in the future. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Have an awesome one, bye.